Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Wednesday, sort of just a little bit after lunchtime here in Australia. Market cap, it says it's up, but this was at 2.13 trillion, so that's kind of down a little bit. But maybe this is just from the time exactly 24 hours ago today in my video. Yesterday was a little bit later, so look, market up pretty nice. Bitcoin dominance, I mean, it is just falling. This is, you know, the true alt season, I get a feeling, is going to come. If this actually gets below 40%, altcoins are just going to go mad. And the funny thing is Bitcoin's price is dropping though. I don't know how long that's going to last and I'm not sure if it'll kind of sucker everyone in. So this dominance will get down to like 39, 38%, maybe 37%. Everyone will be sort of aping into altcoins. And then Bitcoin just goes on a mad run and sucks a ton of liquidity out of the market. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm never offering you financial advice. Just a personal opinion. We'll have to be wait and see. Look, you know, maybe we can have a crazy alt season why Bitcoin slowly makes its way up. But it's just hard to believe that Bitcoin's kind of going down at the moment. And that's what, for me, makes it kind of good buy. I still think Bitcoin under 50,000 is a really good buy. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Long-term sort of holds, that is. But in saying that, if Bitcoin only gets to, let's say, maybe 100, 130,000, it is possible that maybe it goes down to 30,000 uh, after it. No guarantees in life. Again, the big money's here. Whether they would let it happen, considering they are all generally probably buying around the thirty to $40,000 range in that sort of big dip that we've had you know time will tell we'll wait and see all right gas prices continue to go up and you know nft stuff is still just going crazy but also people aping into you know all of these sort of altcoins at the moment so it's a very interesting time i mean look at the volume 343 billion dollars in 12 24 hours that's uh impressive so things are starting to move now what i wanted to do is have a look at how well things have been doing because it feels like it was literally only yesterday that we weren't doing that well. We're all like, oh God, Bitcoin's going down. It's you know below $30,000. It went down to sort of $28,000, $29,000. But this is actually how it's been doing. Bitcoin, the big daddy, up 30% in the last three months. In the last month, it's up 16%, down over the last seven days and 24 hours. But I mean, as we scroll down, there is a couple of just, you know, Solana. I mean, good Lord, 264, 249%. Luna, 182%, 418% in the last three months for Luna. Holy cow. Now, there is another one that's really going to blow us away. I think it's Axie Infinity. But AVAX, similar thing. Last uh, month, 214%. What else? Where are we going to? I'm sure it's Axie Infinity. It just does something absolutely crazy. Yeah, here it is. Axie Infinity, 1,400% in the last three months. That is crazy. Where else can you go and put your money and make those kind of returns? I have no idea. But look, even if you didn't pick all the good ones, you could have just thrown money at kind of anything. In the last three months, you know, you're going to be up 20, 30, 40, 50% plus, depending. 43% for the graph in the last month. Nice. Uh, having a bit of a pullback here. 50% for Clayton. Uh, Neo up 30% over the last month. 107% for uh, E Gold. So Elrond. There we go. Kasama 109%. Oh, waves 114% in three months. 74% of that was in the last month. So I mean, there is a ton of money right there. Now, again, we have to wait and see what's going to happen because things can change pretty quickly. So, what about losses, though? Last 24 hours. Ugh, doesn't look too good there. A couple of losses, but again, look how much these coins have all gone up over the last few months. Perp is down 13.8% now, but if you bought three months ago, you are up 140%. You know, Phantom down 12%. You're up 135% in the last three months. 190% just in the last month. I mean, Audius, nice. Again, there's Luna. So there is some really good movers. Let's have a look though. What about three months? Is there anything in the top 100 that has underperformed? We can obviously see Axie Infinity uh, is doing quite well. 
Oh, there we go. Safe Moon says it all. In the last three months, down. ICP down. Uh, Telcoin down. Interestingly, Polygon. That makes me think that there might be some sort of moves getting ready, considering they did did buy up uh, Hermes uh, and are looking at optimistic roll-ups and things like that. Celsius Network taken down a little bit. EOS, Shiba Inu, Thor Rune Chain. But again, even though they might be down over three months, in the last month they're generally all up a little bit and not doing, doing too bad. Doge, I mean, again, everyone was aping into this thinking it was going to a dollar. And it did get close. I think it was up around 80 cents there for a while. And now back down to 27 cents. But Shiba Inu, I mean, have a look at that. It is absolutely getting crushed. Hence why you got to be very careful with these meme coins. You know, if you can get in and get out pretty quick, fair enough. I mean, Yearn Finance, I think even this got up to about $80,000. Uh, it was above Bitcoin for a while now, and now look where it is, definitely down below. Hence why Bitcoin, it really is the king. There's a Bitcoin cash, you know, kind of holding in there. 630 bucks, it's still a long way uh, off its old all-time high, and, you know, I don't know if it'll ever get back to its old all-time high, to be honest. We'll have to wait and see. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So very interesting. We have broken out of this uh, upwards trending channel again. So this upwards trending channel may actually become invalidated. You know, we're still flirting with it. And just because we're down below now doesn't mean we can't jump back up and pump in. But we'll have to wait and see. At the moment, I think it's still valid because, you know, trading to the upside uh, for a while. But you can see we were generally kind of bouncing around that area. Then we were back in. Again, we've only been outside it for a very short time. Otherwise, we've been in it all the way since March of last year so interesting have to wait and see i wouldn't be surprised if bitcoin continues to fall a little bit gets down to you know the low 40s again maybe down here around that forty-two thousand dollar mark before it starts to make its next move upwards no guarantees in life nothing certain just something i am keeping an eye out for as long as bitcoin's going down though generally i don't mind it i just don't want to be buying it too much particularly when it's breaking all-time highs. So as soon as Bitcoin gets above 60,000, it's not that I won't buy anymore, I will, but I just won't be aping into it because, uh, yeah, you just never know. Look, you might get lucky, buy it at 64,000 and it goes to 120,000, you, you know, double your money. That'll be great, but again, there's no guarantees. Once Bitcoin starts to break into all, you know, new all-time highs, I would be making a position around here, don't get me wrong, this would be a breakout sort of trade thing. Like when something's about to break into new all-time highs, absolutely not a bad idea to get in there. Never financial advice because it can be a complete uh, fake out and then just drop off. But if you put in you know, an order sort of around $61,000 and then again set stop losses and things like that, sell orders for if it drops back down to 59000 But generally, you know, getting into something as it's about to break all-time highs, can be pretty uh, pretty profitable profitable sorry but you still have to know when to sell and like who knows exactly when to sell so whether you sell on you know 25 percent gain or 10 percent gain or 150 percent gain or 700 percent gain that is the hard part and again then it really depends on your uh, outlook are you investing you know to, again for just a quick flip or are you investing long term because long term i don't think 64,000 is a bad buy uh, particularly if you're holding over 10 years but in the kind of short term, so let's say maybe next sort of year, it may not be the best price. But again, maybe it will be. Maybe Bitcoin really does go up to that 400-ish sort of thousand that some people have said. And we don't ever see Bitcoin at 64,000 again. Not so sure about that. Not completely sold on it. But anyway, I'll let you make up your own mind. All right, just a couple of news stories. DeFi protocol Balancer, they have now joined Arbitrum uh, to scale uh, and help reduce the liquidity costs. Again, the you know the costs on Ethereum, they are horrendous at the moment. They are really high, depending on what you're doing. You know, you can be paying, you know, I think the NFTs at the moment, you're paying nearly $100 plus for Ethereum gas fees on some of those protocols at the moment. From what I've heard, I'm not, you know, into that NFT scene like that. Uh, so I haven't physically done it myself, but there's a lot of people on Twitter and even YouTube that have said the gas fees are absolutely horrendous at the moment. Hence why it's only the big players who are playing in the NFT kind of space at the moment. The little guy, very hard for us to get in there. Other than, you know, some obscure little sort of things, 
Uh, but again, the gas prices, they just then uh, cut out the little guy. So another one joining, uh, you know, again, these optimistic roll-ups, ZK roll-ups, you know, Arbitrum, Optimism, you know, there's a lot of different layer two solutions going on there. And again, we're still, we need the Ethereum base layer itself. We need that ETH 2.0 to really come through and to just free it all up. Because until that happens, yeah, ETH is just going to continue to have its value eroded away by these other protocols. And it is worrying if you're an ETH holder. And I've got a reasonable amount of ETH. I mean, it makes up, God, I think it's about 40% of my... Uh, portfolio at the moment maybe a little bit less 35 33 percent somewhere around about there uh and yeah if eth can't get it sorted then very disappointing hopefully it does though not here to spread fud but it's just been a concern of mine the whole time hence why i've never dumped all my money into any one thing not even bitcoin because i believe in bitcoin i fundamentally think it's going to be around for a long time but not enough to just chuck everything into it. I'm not a maxi on anything. I'm not even completely sold on cryptocurrencies, as in, you know, everything has to go to cryptocurrencies. I have a lot invested in cryptocurrencies at the moment, but I don't plan to have it that way all the time. It just seems like the best bet at the moment. But should we go into a bear market, and then, you know, whether it, you know, lasts a year or something like that, and whether it, you know, the total market cap and Bitcoin and that, you know, drop 50 plus percent again. I don't know. But when a bear market does come, I would like to invest uh, in other things until we see the start of another uh, bull market. That's my plan. Whether it works out that way or not, we'll have to wait and see. All right. This is big though. MetaMask surpasses 10 million monthly active users, climbing 1800% in the last 12 months. That is how fast things are growing. And we're st you are still early. Most people, particularly anyone, and I suppose this is, you know, fair enough. But if you're not in cryptocurrencies, they wouldn't know what MetaMask is. They wouldn't have a clue. So that's not exactly surprising. But, I mean, who, who doesn't use MetaMask these days is what I would say. If you're doing anything on Ethereum, just about everybody is using MetaMask. It's another kind of level of security and things like that and just makes it easy it's generally what you have to have you know to be able to use all the dApps and things out there uh, and this shows you how big this space is getting it's just growing and again it's still up 1800 percent in 12 months throughout all these dips uh, and again that's what makes me quite bullish about this space right biden administration pushes for global crypto data sharing rules in its $3.5 trillion budget bill. So basically what it's saying is that uh, all the crypto exchanges around the world, we want you to pass on information uh, about who's using your exchanges and things like that. And they're going to share that information with other countries. And they want the same uh, reciprocal to make sure that their Amer US American citizens aren't dodging their taxes in the US and vice versa. They'll report uh, on people using you know US ones to other countries look I don't really have a problem with this uh, again we need regulation we need things like this to make sure that you know main it can be adopted by mainstream but let's again I just don't want any kind of over regulation and things like that you know and whether you agree on how taxes are being spent and all that is a completely separate uh, argument but I think most of us would agree there need to be some taxes things need to be paid for you know how the governments spend the money is a, again a completely different argument but look out i'd say that you know we are becoming that global kind of network now it's no longer you know countries are all separate and they don't really do business with each other i mean countries have been doing business with each other for a long time but i know when i was very young i mean the thought of buying something from overseas or trading overseas that was just it was unheard of you know unless you were kind of in you know, working for, you know, big multinational companies, the average Joe was not doing anything like that. We weren't buying things from overseas very often. I'm not saying it never happened, but it just wasn't like it is. These days you jump on, you know, eBay, Amazon, whatever, and you can be buying stuff from, you know, anywhere around the globe. And then it shows up on your doorstep, you know, a week or two later, if you're lucky. Uh, you know, with some of the issues going on at the moment, shipping can be a little bit of a problem, but... Yeah, not that long ago. You go back two years ago, I mean, I was buying stuff from overseas and literally within seven to 10 days, it'd be on my doorstep. That's the kind of world we're living in at the moment. 
and all the countries are going to kind of band together to make sure that they're all getting you know the taxes that, that they're supposed to get and yeah people aren't you know able to simply skip that part because yeah no one wants to miss out on their piece of the pie simple as that and particularly not you know governments and things like that they are the ones that you know really will make sure they're getting their their money for sure all right u.s former president so um donald trump has come out and says he thinks crypto uh, is a disaster waiting to happen <sighs> the unfortunate part is there is some truth to that there is definitely some truth to that as i've said before over ten thousand different cryptocurrencies out there you'd be lucky if 100 200 of them are actually legit and any good let alone uh, have any lasting power just because there might be some good ones out there doesn't mean they'll even last there's a whole lot more than you know just having a good product there's marketing that goes into it and all sorts of things you know adoption you can have the greatest project or greatest you know tool instrument whatever it is if it's not marketed properly particularly if it's not marketed at all uh, it's unlikely to ever get that kind of adoption so it's not just simply having a good product there's a whole lot more that has to go into it so a lot of cryptos unfortunately long term will fail they will literally trade to almost nothing and i got caught out i bought you know icos in 2017 and i still have some of them now and they're worth pennies i paid you know like four hundred dollars a couple hundred dollars to get into them got some coins and almost instantly uh they just basically went down to almost nothing literally i've got one that i paid uh, god what did i pay for i think maybe four hundred dollars uh at the ico and it's currently worth 60 bucks so it really has gone down another one i paid a little bit less i think it was 100 dollars, but it's worth a dollar 85 and I've got a couple, I think a couple hundred tokens, maybe a thousand tokens, and in total they're worth a dollar eighty-five. That is, yeah, depressing times. But what can you do? That's the, the sort of risks of investing, right? FTX US are going to launch a crypto derivatives after they acquired Ledger X, and what that means is that they can bring Bitcoin and Ethereum futures and options to its US customers, and on the blockchain. Currently, we don't have options and things like that on the blockchain. This will, I'm pretty sure, I'll put it on the blockchain. And, you know, FTX.com sort of, uh, they have this kind of stuff, leverage and all the rest of it, futures, but they don't have it to its US customers. It doesn't mean the US customers can't use it. They're all just using VPNs and things like that. But this will kind of legitimize it, make it accessible to all of their customers in the US. So this is big news and I am pretty bullish on ftx and again you know another project that i wish i just had have got into earlier but there's so many new projects coming out you know it's nearly impossible to just keep jumping on new ones all the time uh, it becomes very very hard but you know congratulations to those who got onto it uh and you know the sam friedman is a bank or something like that i forget exactly what his name is the guy that created it you know there's the photo of him sleeping on the floor while he was trying to put it all together it seems to all pay or have all paid off for him now i mean you know he's got naming rights to the old miami heat stadium and he got the new uh california i forget what it is the uh, nfl stadium so yeah ftx is just going to be a behemoth and i think it really is trying to take on uh binance uh and things like uh coinbase yeah. and last but not least so how's this a fake Banksy NFT sold or sells for 338,000 in Ethereum. Uh, but it's all been sort of sorted, you know, thank God. And the scammer has returned most of the funds is what it says. But the sad part here is Banksy's official website was either hacked or it was subject to an inside job. So again, another thing with the NFT is I just... I, I don't know enough about them to kind of go out and buy one. No one me, I'd, again, spend too much on something that's never going to be worth anything or even worse, uh, you know, buy something that's simply not even on the blockchain and I've just been completely, you know, scammed out of my money. I'm not saying I'd never buy an uh, NFT. I definitely would, but I wouldn't be spending lots of money, like putting lots of money into untested uh, waters, I guess, 
you know, in sort of four, five, six years time or something, when we see how all these NFTs play out, should I have enough money to kind of put into an NFT that's held its value? And that's the way I want to kind of retain uh, some of my wealth. Absolutely. But at the moment, you know, you see crypto punks, you know, going for millions of dollars. They probably will be worth millions uh, going well into the future, but I just... I couldn't do it. Number one, I don't have the money, <laughs> the period. I couldn't even buy one at a million dollars, not even close. But if I did have the money, I still would be very uh, mindful about spending that kind of money. Now, don't get me wrong. If I had hundreds of millions, yeah, sure, why not chuck a million on one or two and see what happens. But outside of that, I just can't do it. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Should all be on that game train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.